Across the country, we're in the midst of an unprecedented explosion in homeschooling and alternative education. The main triggers were COVID-19 shutdowns and masking policies, but parents were already frustrated and revolting, even in some of the most liberal cities, over radical social agendas and poor academic results. Today, we investigate the mass exodus from America's public schools. Just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ear smoke. Carter Mackey's may be just four years old, but his parents have already made a big decision about his formal education. Why do dragons love tacos? Have you decided whether he'll go to public school or not? Um, we've decided that we want to at least try to homeschool, and then if we need to make a decision, I think schools and public schools, you know, have a purpose, but there's a lot of unknown and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on in the schools and a lot of um, that, that is concerning. That's an understatement. Tell them to show some courage. We don't need a microphone. From coast to coast, the last few years have been marked by unprecedented events and stunning revolts surrounding public schools. Fascists! My six-year-old somberly came to me and asked me if she was born evil because she was a white person, something she learned in a history lesson at school. I'd rather see this school in ashes than to see you sit there with your pockets full while you suffocate our children with diapers on their faces. My children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. All right? That's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready to, I, I will call every. Okay, that's three minutes. Recall the school board. Yes. Recall the school board. In San Francisco, fed up parents gave three school board members the boot in a landslide vote, accusing the board of putting woke activism over academics. Then for their true that colors so and what they're trying to do to silence us. In Loudoun County, Virginia, parents also recalled a school board member and are working on the others. Some parents are even putting themselves in the driver's seat. I'm biracial, I'm bilingual, I'm multicultural. The fact is Running for political Carolina, office. And the person who tells my little pecan color kids that they're somehow oppressed based on the color of their skin would be absolutely wrong and absolutely at war with me. My name is Brian Echeverria. I thank you for your service and we're taking back the wheel. Our K through 12 schools rank 40th in the nation. When my wife and I look at our own kids, we wonder, will they have it better than us? Right now, the answer is no. One of the biggest consequences of all the upheaval is a dramatic exodus from public schools. Corey DeAngelis is National Director of Research at the American Federation for Children, an advocate for school choice. Relative to pre-pandemic levels, homeschooling has at least doubled. That's so huge. That's a huge yeah. surge in homeschooling. How many kids does that represent, are we talking about? It's about uh, a couple million students uh, nationwide formally homeschooling pre-pandemic levels. So closer to 4 million students, for example, now. Still more students have left for religious schools or other private schools. And charter school enrollment has spiked more than 7%. Since pre-pandemic levels, there's been a mass exodus from the traditional public school system. And the public schools lost about 1.5 million students. And a, a, Is that in 2021 or? This was the 2020-2021 school year relative to the previous year about a 3.3% drop in enrollment. And so my basic idea is that the, the funding should follow the child to wherever they're getting an education. If it's the public school and that works best for them, absolutely they should be able to have that opportunity to stay there. But if not, they should be able to take their education dollars to a private charter home or another type of option. And that's school choice more or less? That's what most people would, would define as school choice. We're actually calling 2021 the year of school choice. And I think it's because the teachers unions overplayed their hand and awakened a sleeping giant. Parents who want more of a say in their kids' education. And 19 states expanded or enacted programs to fund students as opposed to systems. If anybody thought all the pupils lost during the COVID shutdowns would return to public school after the pandemic, that hasn't happened. For all the bad things that happened starting in 2020, one of the unintended benefits is that some people got a taste of home-based education and people who thought that they didn't have the ability to do it or they just didn't um, understand what it would take to, to get the job done, 
they've started to figure out that, well, maybe this works better for my kids. So that's how many electrons it has. That's the story of the Steckers when schools closed in Loudoun County, Virginia. Well, they started with the shutting down of the schools. Um, the kids had to be home at home. They weren't learning anything new. So the entire last quarter was a wash for them. So when we realized that they weren't going to have a plan to, to treat them any better, we said, all right, we're going to give homeschooling uh, a try. Remember what I said, if, if you don't know the answer to something, move on to the next one. And when they started talking about bringing the kids back to school, um, first of all, they're just so much wishy-washy about it. They, they didn't have a solid plan. But by then, we, Loudoun County started hitting the national news over and over and over again. We became much more aware of their policies. There was the father wrestled to the ground at a school board meeting. He tried to speak about his daughter's sexual assault in the bathroom by a boy wearing a skirt. Also in Loudoun County, there were controversies over taxpayer funds used to train educators in critical race theory and a criminal investigation over a Facebook parents group that targeted parents and turned out to be made up of school board members and the local prosecutor. And at that point, actually, one of my friends said, hey, the, the kids are going back to school. Are you going to put your kids back in school? And I said, let's see if Loudoun County Public Schools can go one week without making the national news first. With their son's home, the Steckers discovered they were good at something they hadn't contemplated before, taking over teaching duties. At this point today, I don't think we want to send them back to school. Because public schools get money per student, the losses translate directly into dollars and cents. Denver, Colorado is projecting a 6% loss of public school students over the next few years, 6,000 kids and $78 million a year. Denver's school superintendent told a board meeting that the district may have to start closing schools starting in 2024 due to dwindling enrollment. And this uh, year and a half wait as we do this process, there are some who are on life support right now who potentially can, will not even make it to that, that timeline. We're not real happy with our education system overall, but certainly there are worse education systems and there are some very good schools. Is there a chance that this could damage the good? When it comes to the kids who remain in the public schools, changes in enrollment and this bottom-up accountability can lead to better outcomes in the public schools as well. In fact, 25 of 27 studies that exist on the topic find statistically significant positive effects of private school choice competition on the kids who remain in the public schools. It's a win-win situation, and in this sense, school choice is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Meantime, parents keeping their children out of public schools are developing even bigger ideas on the direction American education should go. And they're taking the wheel. We need to be more involved and we need to be able to help develop the plan for our children's education. So it's got to be more flexibility, more a la carte, more customization. I think the kids should be like the CEOs of their own education, you know, as far as the things that they like and the things that they do. And that counts. I think that should be more more heavily focused on versus on things that it's like, hey, you got to know this, but they might not ever use it. A poll by Real Clear Opinion Research found 74 percent supporting school choice after a year of school shutdowns, up 10 percentage points from the year before.